So um, yeah, tonight's all about retrospective design and we're gonna, you know, practice it. You're, you're all gonna be designing a retrospective. We're gonna be working in small groups. Each small group is gonna design a retrospective and the retrospective that you're going to be designing is for this organization, for Bay ALN. So when we talked about uh, having me come in and do this session, uh, one of the things I was asked was, could we use the Bay ALN as the, you know, as the topic, as the as the uh, the target, if you will, for the retrospective? Because there's a, a desire to hold a retrospective uh, for this organization, looking back on the last year or so, and so, you know. The organizers would like to leverage all of you smart people uh, to help design that. And so each team's going to design one, going to share your design with the rest of us. And we're going to, I'm going to provide the uh, links to all of those designs uh, back to the COCO. So they'll be able to like, you know, look through and, and choose one or maybe mix and match if they want. So yeah, I'm going to dive right in and give you a kind of a little tour of how we're going to be doing this. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Yep, there we go. So uh, you are going to be designing your retrospective for the Bay ALN using a template that looks exactly like this. And this template is actually a specific instance of a more generic a uh, meeting template that I created a bazillion years ago, uh, in fact, kind of pre being involved with all of this cool agile stuff. And uh, if you're interested, there's a link to that template down here at the bottom. So when you when you get into your worksheet, if you're like, huh, oh, maybe I could use this template for other things. Yeah, click there. You can get the original template. It's basically an all purpose meeting agenda template that has way more stuff than you would ever need for any given meeting. So you can mostly create uh, an agenda for any meeting by deleting the bits that you don't need. So I use that as a starting point to create this. And uh, up at the top, just some general information, right, about the, the session um, that you're designing. So, you know, what's the goal, right? Anytime you get a group of people together, always really good to have a goal, a purpose. So we know why are we getting together and how can we know we can stop doing what we're doing because we've achieved our goal. Uh, you know, when will this gathering happen? I don't know the date, uh, but probably at the usual time. So put that in. Uh, location, almost certainly uh, Zoom. So you're going to be designing a virtual retrospective, uh, one that can one that can happen over Zoom. Uh, who's the owner of the gathering? Well, I guess I guess the Coco. Uh, who's the facilitator? We don't know. Who's the scribe? We don't know. Who's the timekeeper? We don't know yet, and that's okay. So getting into the agenda, each section, each uh, section here uh, has a description, you know, what is that part of the gathering? How are we going to do it? Um, what's the goal of that part of the retrospective? Who's going to be guiding it? Uh, what's the allocated time? And, you know, when does it start? And the template kind of automatically uh, calculates the rest of the rest of the times for you. So this is the template you're going to be starting with. And there's handy dandy instructions down here to guide you and you know, what are you gonna be doing? And basically you're going to be selecting activities for these four parts of the retrospective, set the stage, gather data, generate insight, decide what to do, and finally close the retrospective. Each, uh, and you're gonna, you know, I'm gonna show you a completed one in just a moment, but you're gonna put in here, what activity did you pick? and put a link back to the how to do this activity so that anyone who picks up your agenda can quickly and easily figure out, oh, how can I do that thing? Now, a, a source that we'll be using for these activities is a site that I'm kind of fond of. It's called Retromat. Um, and so each of these sections, the titles, uh, are a link that goes to the Retromat site uh, in a way that lists all of the activities that they have that are classified as uh, fitting that section. So for example, I just clicked on the set the stage and that takes me to uh, a big list of all the activities that Retromat thinks are good for setting the stage. 
And so you'll get to like scroll through here in your team and go, oh, you know, is there one of these that we think would be really good for the Bay ALN retro? Now, you don't have to limit yourself to just the ones that, you know, are here on RetroMat. If you know an activity that you think would be awesome uh, and it's somewhere else, that's fantastic. I know a lot of you are familiar, for example, with liberating structures. So if there's a liberating structure activity that you think would be awesome, great. Use that, you know, and, and drop a link to that in there. Once you pick your activity, like let's say I think, oh, this ESVP activity here would be really great to kick off the retrospective and do this at the stage. Uh, great. We're going to, you know, copy that maybe, you know, shoot, and then paste that in here in the how. And then very excitingly, here, in fact, I should actually show how to do it. So copy and come in here and paste, right? Okay, great. Now notice that there's this number, right? Number one, it just means, oh, this is activity number one in their big list. But here's the secret. If you hover over that number one, that gives you a link that goes straight to that activity by itself. And so you can grab that link and then come in here and using the magic of uh, Google Spreadsheets, which let me make it bigger so it's easier to find a little Linkify icon. Linkify icon, where are you? Well, I can probably do it from the right click. Uh, insert link. And then I'm going to paste in that link that I just copied. And so now, right, in this little agenda, it's like, oh, we're going to use this activity called ESVP. Boom. Here's a link that'll take you to it. So you, you, know, you can understand how to do it and how does the activity work. So you're going to be doing that for each of the stages uh, here in the retrospective. So let me show you a uh, completed example. So this one isn't specifically for the Bay ALN, but it's an example of a retrospective agenda created using this approach that you're going to be using. So um, now, obviously, you could do this really quickly, right? You could go to each of the sections and grab the first activity and paste it in and go, ha ha, we're done, right? Um, but your goal is actually to design a retrospective that's going to flow really well, right? And a random mix of activities, maybe not going to flow really well, right? Many of these activities are uh, designed to be done in person. You're going to have to think about, oh, how could we do that one uh, virtually if we want to use that one? So your goal is to create an agenda that will work well in a virtual environment, and the activities will flow nicely from one to the other. Uh, after you've created your agenda, uh, each team is going to present their work. So they're going to share, oh, for set the stage, we, we uh, picked a check-in Amazon review, and then they'll walk us through, oh, for this one, uh, each team member is going to create a short review with a title, content, and a star rating uh, to, you know, uh, review the sprint that we just completed, right? Oh, okay. All right. That's cool. And uh, we've allocated five minutes for that, right, for people to make their reviews. And then in the gather data section, we decided to go with uh, tweet my sprint. Uh, different than pimp my ride, by the way. Tweet my sprint. It's, it's, it's a little different. Um, so, oh, for this one, uh, participants will each write three or more tweets on sticky notes. We figure we could use Miro or something like that to do that. Uh, about the iteration we've just completed, and, you know, they could be about the iteration as a whole or individual stories or, you know, something that didn't go well. So basically, we think this will be a really good data gathering activity because it's going to give us, you know, all these virtual post-it notes uh, about what are the things that happened during the sprint. Uh, and we've given ourselves 10 minutes for that. And then we're going to use speed dating because we think this is awesome for generating insights. So let me tell you about speed dating. Uh, so the way this will work is each participant writes down uh, a topic they want to explore, uh, and then they form pairs. So we'll send them off in breakout rooms. And uh, they talk about it for five minutes. So they, they talk about each of their uh, topics. Uh, and then we bring them back and we mix and match the pairs so that lots of pairs will get formed and lots of conversations will happen. We think that's going to be awesome for uh, Generate Insight, and we've allocated 15 minutes for that. Um, then we're going to use keep, drop, and add, 
right? So on and so forth, I'd walk you through that. And then finally, we're going to close with my team is awesome. And I'd walk you through that. Now, after your team presents your design, there'll be some opportunity for like discussion, feedback, things like that. Uh, one thing that somebody might say is, well, hey, speed dating sounds cool, but if each pair is getting five minutes, 15 minutes, probably not enough time, right? Because people got to, you know, write their initial thoughts and then we're going to have to pair them up for five minutes and then remix for five minutes. And, you know, it's either you're going to have to allocate more time or probably pick a different activity. So that's the sort of exploration we want to do, uh, you know, and give each other feedback and, you know, kudos and also, you know, uh, helpful, helpful feedback like that so that we can, uh, we can grow and improve. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, again, instructions are down here, so you can always refer back to those. Uh, questions before I send you off to meet your teams and, uh, you know, get the party rolling. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. And the question that I was answering, just as you all were coming back, is mm -hmm. that, um, yeah, these, these uh, files that you were working in aren't going anywhere. Um, and if you want to make uh, a copy, by all mm -hmm. means do so. That you've got two options for that. Uh, if you are logged into Google, then you can go up to the file menu in your Teams uh, template and choose make a copy. That'll put a copy in your uh, Google ooh. Drive. If you're not logged into Google, that's okay. Go to the file menu and just choose download. You can download it as an open document spreadsheet or an Excel file. And you know, pretty much all the formatting and links and everything else will will come along with it. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to give each team uh, an opportunity to walk us through their template. And I'm going to drop all the links in the chat one more time. Uh, so if you'd like, you can follow along with a team as they're presenting uh, just by looking in their document. And uh, probably unsurprisingly, team one, guess what? Yeah, <laughs> we're starting with you. So team one, if you'd walk us through the retrospective that you designed and uh, tell us about the activities you chose and all of that. Okay, absolutely. So uh, we decided to start with a temperature reading, which means that uh, I need to reopen those particular items, but what it means is uh, drawing a third uh, a thermometer in on a mirror board and then have people uh, annotated saying um, if they're uh, totally mad or happy and so on and actually if you follow that link and look at number 22 it's important that you click on the view photo uh, link which is there and you'll see this th thermometer with the really mad mad sad normal happy really happy and excited and why. So we thought that was just a, I was going to say a cool way of starting. That's probably not the right thing. It's no pun intended. And then uh, we decided for gathering the data to go with the timeline technique, which I think most of us have used. And so the idea there is that you draw a timeline and then you have people uh, remember events that happened. And although in this case, it doesn't mention it, when I personally had done it in the past, the idea was that uh, good things were put above the line and bad things below, below the line. So that there was uh, you know, just a visual indication of in general, did things go well or not go well, just by the placement. And then we decided for the general insight to do the perfection game. And uh, there the focus is uh, what would make the next iteration a perfect 10 out of 10. And we didn't explicitly say this, but I think one aspect we liked was, or I liked, I should say, is that it's focusing on good things and not negative things. And then for the decide what to do, we actually um, 
went back and forth a little bit. We'd found one technique, but we didn't think it flowed very well. So we decided to not go with any of the retro mat suggestions and just use dot voting so that we wouldn't have to recreate cards and, and so on. And then finally to close, we decided to use takeaways, which we like because it was really simple. And we like the idea that it captured what people learned during the retrospective. So yeah. I don't know if, it, if any of my uh, team one colleagues would like to uh, add any comments, please feel free. Yay. And uh, group, any feedback on the agenda that they created? Any suggestions for improvement or particular kudos you want to call out? Anything like that? I like the focus on the positive aspects. That's a good call. Nice. Nice. So do we, uh, in the Bhuvaneshwari? On retrospective, we should work on lessons learned also. So do we have to include that aspect? We have to think about it. Yeah, and, and my response on that one would be, I always think of the goal of a retrospective being to come up with an improvement experiment that we're going to do in the, the coming sprint or whatever the period is that we're retrospecting on. And lots of ways to do that right so we could look at what didn't go so well and come up with like oh here's something we'll try differently that we we think will make it go better uh sometimes we can do it by saying hey wow this this thing went really unexpectedly well and what made that go so well and how can we keep doing that i i think any way you approach it so long as you're coming out of each retrospective with uh an improvement to try i i think you're doing it right is that is that helpful? To, was I speaking to the right question or concern? So then, uh, are we not focusing on only things which have which we have done right and we want to recreate it? But there will be things in a project which haven't gone properly. How do we address those things? Uh, that you can absolutely do that in a retrospective. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah, Thank you. absolutely. I, I think maybe in this one, the perfection game may be kind of going towards that like uh, how can we perfect what you know how could we make it more perfect I don't know <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 if if it had gone perfectly what would that have looked like and then yeah that's yes. a great springboard for like oh well how how could we try to be more like that next sprint that's awesome yeah perfection game probably might address those things yeah thank yeah. you nice nice Excellent. And as part of the Bale and Coco, I really like because we are talking about not so much a sprint here, but a year's worth of programs. Mm -hmm. The timeline idea and sorting meetings above and below the line is a really quick way of <clears throat> seeing which of the programs fared better than others. Okay. Yeah, I mentioned that also to the team that uh, with the temperature reading it's important not to think about just how you feel right now you have to take the perspective of the whole period that you're looking at and sort of average it out okay. so the the talk timeline also helps with that nice nice give it up for team one Woo! very Woo! thoughtful very thoughtful retrospective agenda all right, team two. Wow, you got a hard act to follow, team two. What you got for us? Tammy, do you want to take this one? Do you want me to? Uh, uh, you, you go ahead. You're the teacher okay. in the group. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you got to practice. We, oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> we are going to set the stage with a weather report. So I put it in chat. It might look like something like this. How is everybody feeling about the goal of our retro. How are we feeling about agreeing on what it is that we're about to do? Are we all sunny? Are there some clouds in our disposition? Is it thunderstorming about agreeing on our goal? I really want to check in on the people and how they are feeling in order to set the stage for a good retro. 
Then we have the classic, whether it's a speedboat, a sailboat, or Tammy has used a pirate ship with her teams. <laughs> we want to know what is putting the wind in our sails and moving us forward and what anchors are dragging us down. So under the context of this year as a period of time, what's really moved us forward? What is anchoring us in place for Bay ALN? To generate insight, get some brainstorming going, we really liked this one called Wish Granted. So it, it is the classic, if a fairy came along and granted you a wish, and here's where we really liked how it's different, how would you know that this wish came true? So it's not what is your wish, but when you wake up tomorrow and your wish is granted, it's having participants describe this ideal future state for the Bay ALN, getting the whole group involved. In deciding what to do and how to move forward, picking what experiments for the group for the upcoming year, merge is actually very similar to a one, two, four, all. Each person has two ideas for experiments or improvements, and then they pair up with another person, and instead of picking which ones to do, you're going to merge your ideas together. Then you're going to do the same thing with another group, merge your ideas together, so everyone in the group has a little bit of input into the experiments that we will do next year for Bay ALM. And then finally, to close this one out, and I loved, Tammy, what you said, that Agile should delight people. We want to know what in this retrospective pleased the participants and what surprised them. So have a positive wrap up, have people comment on the actions that we're committing to and what came up in the retro, and just end on a really good note. So Tammy, Irina, Danielle, did I miss anything? Anything you want to add? You did great. <laughs> cool. So that is team number two for the Bay ALN. Have you done a merge on Zoom? Hmm. I have done one, two, four, all on Zoom. So I would take people and put them in breakout groups of two. And then I would note who is in what breakout group while they are off talking and make sure that the same pairs then ended up in a breakout room of four. Then note who's in those four and put them in a group of eight. So yeah, I have done something very similar. Or, uh, yeah, as a host, I can assign. So we announce, okay, your twos are over and you're going to be popping into four and then I can move them into, okay, got it. Exactly. Cool. Yeah, I can see it. I, I've watched season do it. It worked well. <laughs> <laughs> so feedback, other, other feedback, thoughts, comments uh, for team two. And I, Go ahead. I just want to say when we were done with this, I felt really like we were focusing really on the positive and uh, really coming out of this, everybody feeling really good, you know. As, nice. In, in the context of a volunteer organization, that's a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Be excited about it yeah, when you're done. Yeah, rather than walking out of the retro going, oh, I'm glad that's done. <laughs> Which can happen. All right, let's hear from team three. And I invite everyone to click into the team three document and follow along. Team three, what'd you come up with? So um, we broke it up. Um, I think each of our team members kind of chose each of the, the sub areas. Did um, we're going to start with the Agile Values trip? Are they off mic? 
Don't forget to come. I didn't choose that one. <laughs> Agile the, values cheer up. Okay, I I picked that one, and that was I was looking for uh, something to get the agile mindset and positive uh, mood set up, and so this was list agile values, and then um, you write everybody writes a short sticky for each one of of the agile area agile like four agile values and then um the positive feedback to um other people this person showed that um value in this instance yeah i like the reflection on the agile values in that And then for gathering the data, we had a link copy. People are familiar with link copy. And the main thing is to, to generate a, a bunch of ideas um, as, well as, as, re, as well as reflecting. Um, and then for generating insight, um, um, I suggested uh, setting course. And so on the nautical theme, <laughs> I met like what uh, we heard before, uh, but this one's imagine you're navigating a boat instead of a product or service. Ask the crew the following questions. Oh, where is a treasure to be found? New things worth trying. Where is a cliff to be safe from? What makes the team worry? Keep course for what existing um, is going well. Change course for what existing process, what existing things go badly. And then uh, once noting that, um, then refocusing on, uh, I think, new things to be worth trying for deciding what to do. And that one was um, dividing the dollars. And that's where, if you guys have used this before, we give people, say, a virtual $100. And everyone can place. So for the, the possible options that have come up with generating insight, you can put your dollars down. And then the, the items with the, the ideas with the most Number of dollars is the highest priority. And then uh, does somebody want to speak to the closing? And uh, pleased and surprised as we've already had as a closing before. And we, we also wanted to end positively. Yay. Nicely done. Nicely done. <laughs> uh, feedback, thoughts, comments for team three. I like Volker's like deep thought. <laughs> I, I'm just sort of lead coffee as part of a retro, particularly in the context of a larger community where not everybody's there, every meeting. And <clears throat> that seems really promising. Mm. That, that's a cool idea. for team four i'm glad you like that <laughs> yeah 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 it's sort of it's so obvious but it's like oh yeah of course yeah. <laughs> it never it never occurred to me who'd have, who'd have done that before yeah i i like the divide the dollar one too i didn't see that one before that kind of tells you also you got to understand your constraints <laughs> that one <laughs> And it's fun. Yeah. A little, a little bit different from dot voting, which we see so much of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Give it up for team three. Nicely done. Nicely done. All right, team four. What you got for us? Okay. Um, we, we broke the mold a little bit here. So I just want to preface this by saying on our team, we discovered that for two of us, this is our first Bay ALN, Bay ALN meeting. And for the other one, it's our second meeting. So we don't have a lot of experience with the group. And so Chris's advice was sort of a more of a build a generic retro format. And we tried to think about the structure of the group that it's not a, it's very much not a work environment where everyone works together all the time where people just sort of come together occasionally. So we started with, um, Check in quick question. I have to peek at this book. This is, oh, just sort of, you know, everyone answers 
a question in turn and just sort of, you know, evaluating kind of where we are and gets people, you know, what I guess in one word, what do you want from the retrospective? So talk about what are people hoping to get from this to sort of set context. Then for Gather Data, we had an interesting discovery here around Lean Coffee. So if you click into Lean Coffee, if you click in Gather Data, Lean Coffee is one of the options. If you click on Lean Coffee, if Lean Coffee's header says it's a Generate Insights thing, and it, it kind of doubles as both from what we see. So that some of the putting stickies up to start with is, is very much gathering data. And then when you start fleshing them out and voting on them and talking about the different things, you're really doing generating insights. So we use Lean Coffee for both which I was gonna say I hope is okay, but it's our retro, so it's obviously okay, right? So we thought that'd be a very effective way, you know, as, as what Volker was just saying and the, and the last team presented as well, for a group that doesn't work together and doesn't have all the same context to throw a bunch of things up there and then vote on them, talk on them. We also expanded the Generate Insight to 25 minutes because we felt like there was no way when you're talking about five minutes a topic and you can add an extra five minutes that you would get very far in 15 minutes. So we. We didn't have a constraint, and I, I suspect if people really talked about this, we would we would spend more than an hour doing a retro for a year, that that would be a little restricted. We'd probably make all of these more time, but I didn't want to go crazy. Um, and then decide what to do. We went, you know, dot voting to sort of say what worked well and worked differently. And I think it's similar to voting patterns that other people have done, that there were a lot of, a lot of these decide what to do were similar vote in some way i think it's somewhat similar the dollar is a, is a weighted voting this is a sort of a, a single voting thing but sort of lead you know which things we think are are most important and what's you know what's going well and also so focus on the positive which i agree is a really important thing that sometimes retros you know you have a team and it's running you know on a, on a letter grade maybe we're a b plus team and you spend all your time talking about all the things that are wrong and it's like it's just a it's a very negative way to do it where things are mostly working so I like that it focused on work well and then to close, we did plus and delta, which is actually very similar to the thing I've heard other teams talk about and describe. Um, what's it called? Please and surprise. I think they're somewhat similar, but it's, I lost my screen. Oh, here we go. You know, plus and delta, what, what, what they liked and what they would change in the retro. So I think it's important to learn from our retro what's going well, what, 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 what about the retro works, what doesn't work, especially as we're trying to build a retro format for this group that I think is a new thing we're doing to say, Hey, that that lean coffee thing you thought was great at it, it was absolutely terrible. We just we just got all over the place and we spent 40 minutes and went nowhere. Eric, like we should note that and say, okay, well, we thought it was good, it didn't work. So that's sort of to make sure we are we retro our retro in a sense. And and that's what we have. I don't know if anyone else on my team wants to add. We sort of agreed on all these things together. Very nice. Oker is scratching his goatee again. I know that that feeling there. They're like, mm. <laughs> no, no, no I'm the, like combining combining the the gathering the data and generating insight in the one lean coffee. That makes a lot of sense to me. One one of the things that you stumbled on here that I I definitely noticed working with Retromat is that sometimes they've got an activity classified in one of these sections and i look at it and i think i would actually use this in a different section awesome right you know absolutely awesome any other thoughts comment feedback i i stand that i think the check-in one is kind of cool especially for this because um like they have the question, what do you need from this retrospective? Or, you know, maybe change it up a little bit for bail and, you know, uh, more what um, what do you think bail and should do? I don't know, something like that. But having that one question thing is kind of cool <laughs> to start out with. Give it up for team four. Nicely done, team four. All right, last but not least, for all the marbles, team five. What do you got? We didn't even talk about who's going to say anything. Uh, that's going to be a topic in our retrospective for sure. 
May, Lena, do you want to? I was going to say, you can, well, how about you? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, volunteer and there's voluntold. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. So if you all click into the link for our retro, um, I don't know exactly what to say about it, but I think we're leaving a lot of room for creativity for the actual implementation of how this might go. So for our set the stage, we picked the activity called postcards, which uh, we'll have to creatively adapt to an online format. Um, we're thinking we'll bring four times as many pictures of some sort that might represent what happened over the year um, in this meetup. And then we'll have people talk about um, why they picked the postcard that they think represents the year for the BLN. And um, we'll see what comes out of that. So that's the first one. Uh, the next one is Retro Wedding, which is borrowing ideas from an Anglo-American wedding custom where you bring something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. And we thought that could be an interesting way to look at, um, you know, what, what was interesting about the various uh, sessions of the meetup. Um, and what else might we be able to do with it? Park bench is our next one, which is a sort of variation of fishbowl. Uh, so we don't necessarily know how we would pull that off in an online environment, but it sounds like season has done one, two, four, all. And this is kind of a little bit like that, where you kind of rotate people around who want to talk about stuff and you invite them into a conversation and there's always one empty seat and um, when the last empty seat is taken by someone new, then someone who has been in the uh, on the park bench has to leave. And this is one way of, of maybe bo boiling down um, a discussion to, you know, what could we be doing? Um, or what, what, what does that mean to us, what we've done and talked about in the retro wedding? In the decide what to do phase, we picked a circle of questions. Again, this will probably have to be adapted in some creative way. Um, but we basically would go around the room and ask each other questions. And um, the interesting part about that is that we wouldn't be uh, you know, it wouldn't be a facilitator asking the questions all the time, but it would be people asking each other questions. And that can generate interesting um, outcomes, I think. And then, like many of us have suggested, we sh we think we want to end the retro with um, a sort of appreciative thing. And what we ended up landing on is shower of appreciation. Um, I'm not even going to talk about how that works because I haven't really read it, but that's what we landed on. Sorry, that's our retro. Hey, Team Five, thoughts, feedback, comments on Team Five. You you know, in presenting that a number of these things would need to be adapted. Like a lot of them seem like they're very much, at least as described on Retro Mat, so it's called, mm -hmm. as very physical activities, right? Four or five chairs in front of the room, and the last one was three chairs together. Have you thought about how you would adapt this to an online format? Nope. Oh, okay. that was going to be my comment. I think this is yeah. begging for a Miro board or a mural or whatever that is. Mm. Like when you were describing the park, maybe it was a circle of questions, whatever it is, you could have like the six chairs, pictures of six chairs mm -hmm. and everybody's name right next to it. And when you want to sit in the chair and talk, you drag your name over. So you're seeing people in the chairs moving in and out as they're talking. A very visual retro. Ooh. See, this is exactly what we were after. Other people yeah. filling in. <laughs> yeah. I, I also we didn't you. have to do that. that <laughs> that's way fancy advance. I also see it raising hands in the chat. Like, like once there are five hands up, you can't raise a sixth hand unless you boot somebody. You know, mm. I don't know how you would force somebody out to be that, but I guess it's the same thing anyway, right? You add some, the last person adds and someone's got to leave. 
you, I guess you could do it chronologically, right? Because I think when you do hand raised hands, it keeps them sorted by the order. Yep. So, mm. Yeah, maybe who's ever in the upper left, like when there's six, oh. it's time for you to sit down. That's fascinating. I like it. I like creative, creative uses of Zoom. That's. Mm -hmm. And and Olaf, the way you're like getting the group to figure it all out, you, my friend, have all sorts of management potential. <laughs> and I never want to go into management. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, other thoughts, comments on this one? Give it up for team five. Yay, Woo. team five. Um, so I want to open it up for thoughts, comments on the whole experience using the tool or what it was like to do it or just really what's what's on your mind? What's your reaction to the experience? So I wanted to make a comment about the 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 agenda that we were uh, filling out. And uh, the comment is that I've worked with teams that say they're too busy to do a retrospective. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which I think uh, probably everybody's experienced at least once. So one way that I've saved time is to do the data collection during the daily standups. Right. And basically just collect all the information. So when we get to the the retro, we can skip the data gathering because we already have a list of all the things that went well or didn't go well and, and do it that way. Nice, nice. I mean, that <clears throat> something I, I, like that is certainly relevant for us as well because very mm -hmm. few people have attended all 12 meetings of the last year. So having some reminder of what we did, you know, last June um, is important for everybody. So starting with a chunk of data as a foundation would be important. Could even have people put comments in the meetup, in uh, meetup.com. I, I found I have... that, yeah, I, I, I found say, that I... people, all right, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I'll stop. No, I, I have tried that. The one thing is, as the facilitator is you have to be very like on people because you'll say oh fill this out and then you know <laughs> they don't because <laughs> you're not in front of their face so and it it it, it works but you definitely have to like remind them yay <laughs> it might not work as well for this group but i found that having people like send the link to the retro to the whether it's a Miro board or whatever tool ahead of time and giving people an opportunity to like take 10 minutes on their own and fill out some things work through all, whether everyone coming to the meeting and trying to think about it and remember on the fly and, mm -hmm. and then you spend a lot of time where some people feel like they don't have a lot to add they're new and they spend two minutes doing something and 10 minutes twiddling their thumbs and you also just do a lot of the mm -hmm. prep asynchronously and then kind of get into the you know generating insight and deciding what to do together as a group I mean, how likely would anybody here respond to, I don't know, some message from Meetup <clears throat> to take 10 minutes ahead of the retro um, if you RSVP'd? Um, mm. Uh huh. So, yeah, give me, give me, a, give me a thumb vote. Couple, couple of thoughts. <laughs> so, yeah, couple of thoughts. So, Meetup does have the this built-in thing where they'll prompt you after a meetup, like, hey, how was that? And you give it a star rating. Um, mm -hmm. I find not a lot of people do that, right? But you could encourage people to do it. Um, the other thing you could do is use a tool like SurveyMonkey or, you know, any number of tools like that and uh, drop a link right at the end of the meetup where you're like, hey, take 30 seconds, share your thoughts. And some number of people would do it. And then at the end of the year, if you're looking back to do a, a big retro, you'd be like, oh, here, here was, you know, the, the feedback we got from people. Um, 
And I know in my my workshops that I do, I, I find dropping the link in the chat at the end of the workshop and asking people, hey, you know, this will take less than a minute. It very, get pretty good participation. So that's that's a thing you might try. We, we're we're a little more ruthless. We have a poll, so in a minute, I will launch the poll, oh, and we keep awesome. track of the results uh, <clears throat> over the years. So mm. we have we have some version of that. That's awesome. Other other thoughts, things that are on your mind, things that you noticed while you're going through the exercise. Well, we rushed at the end. <laughs> Never happens. Yeah, I mean, thanks for sharing that. These were lots of really great ideas. I mean, we were quickly, yeah. you know, scanning them, but it definitely uh, would love to sit down and just go over them, you know, <laughs> at my own pace. Lots of really good ideas. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I certainly feel inspired to do actually do a retro <laughs> to, with, to, with for a volunteer group. I mean, we've tried over the years is is a mixed experience, but after all these ideas, I'm like, oh yeah, that would be really useful. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> Couple of things. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, me. Yes, yeah. Well, I just wanted to share that. So because I, I did that last month with uh, with my team, which was really fun, by the way. So it may not be for BLN, but if you want to do it with your teams, um, we used uh, DALI, you know, that's the AI image generator. And they oh. had to describe the sprint and then it will produce an image and I encourage them to play with words and style until there's something that they like and then they come and show us. <laughs> they took turns showing us the image that they came up with and uh, um, <laughs> and why they said that and <laughs> but it was lots of fun. It was super fun. That's a great idea. That is fantastic. <laughs> I love that. Way of getting people hooked. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's a really nice, like not threatening way to start to get familiar with our new AI overlords. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that's excellent. So I dropped uh, my LinkedIn profile link in the chat. I'd be happy to connect with any of you. Many of you were already connected. Um, and I always encourage people at meetups, right? It's like, build your network, right? Connect with folks. Um, and especially in these times where, you know, lots of folks are looking for work, the bigger your network is, the, the better off you are, so. And then um, I would also like to just mention uh, that uh, pretty much every Monday afternoon from three to four, uh, I hold a free open office hour. Uh, we coordinate that through Meetup. So there's the the link in. Whoop, did I did I drop that in the chat? I don't think I did. Hold on. Let me try again. I've used copy and paste before. I'm we're good. Clobbering you, Chris. We're clobbering you. Oh, is that it? Okay, there we go. So. Uh, so, so feel free to to hang out with me there. A lot of you already do. It's a lot of familiar faces. I love it. It's good to see you all. Um, this is this is one of the things that honestly really originally drew me to to doing this this work, right? This agile work was the community that I found. Uh, so all these years later, it's still a big reason why I find it so fulfilling. Um, so thank you all for hanging out with me. And uh, I heard a rumor that Volker's going to look at that. Look at that. There it is. There it is. Wow. Wow. Got my prompt. Right. Wow. And uh, remember, click on the number for how many dollars you would like me to send you. <laughs> uh, had a really good time with you all. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you again. 
This is this is such an amazing community. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was great. Thanks, Chris.